How did one of the most glorious and decorated club sides of footballing history, led by arguably the greatest player of all time, managed by a former legend turned world class coach, conquer one of the most prestigious club competitions in world football? Era defining doesn't even cover it. This is GOATS, the greatest of all teams, with Real Madrid 2015 to 2018, the Champions League 3 p Firstly, let's go back to the start of this European conquering side where Zinedine Zidane wasn't even in charge of Los Blancos. At the time, Real Madrid were a bit of a wounded animal, having seen Barcelona not only complete a treble, but also take Real Madrid's European crown. It was a season which ended trophyless back in 2015 and which saw Carlo Ancelotti pay with his job. A few months into the new season, Rafael Benitez was the man in charge. Although his style of discipline didn't exactly sit well with too many of the players, they didn't show up in the big games, including an embarrassing 4-0 home defeat to Barcelona and at the turn of the new year with them out of the Copa del Rey and four points behind league leaders Atletico Madrid, Zinedine Zidane stepped in to take his first senior role in coaching. Immediately Zidane settled down the side. The 4-3-3 formation was consistent as were the majority of the players being picked in the side. If you combine this with the fact that Zidane was able to control and demand the respect of so many big egos in the Real Madrid team along with the fact that he instilled a winning mentality right to the death well, they had a pretty good end to the season. It was this mentality of Zidane's, even when things weren't quite going their way, which was a hallmark of the three years that he spent in charge at the club. It was evident in the first season. They had their first win on Italian soil in eight years with a 2-0 victory over Roma in the round of 16. Wolfsburg was swept aside after a 2-0 deficit was brought back to the Bernabeu, with Cristiano Ronaldo providing a hat-trick. And in the final, they kept their calm, they kept their composure after not such a great game to score all five penalties in the shootout and break Atleti hearts in the Champions League final for the second time in three years. Winning the Champions League and finishing only one point behind Barcelona in La Liga wasn't exactly the worst first six months for Zidane in charge, but things were about to get a whole lot better. The second season brought even more dominance for Zinedine Zidane's men. Not only did they retain their European crown, they managed to topple Barcelona at the top of La Liga and add to their Club World Cup and UEFA Super Cup victories. The main thing was on the pitch that all the players managed to buy into Zidane's plans and put it into action during the 90 minutes, week in, week out. Throughout the whole season, they were an unstoppable force. The game plan still involved massaging the egos of the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, but also getting the best out of the rest of the squad who maybe had to do a little bit of the dirtier work. This is where the increasingly important role of Casemiro really came to light. He came in the season before and Zidane eventually ended up saying that Casemiro was one of if not the most important players in this Real Madrid team. In attack, Ronaldo was a few goals shy of his season's previous tally, but they had new boy Morata, Benzema, Asensio, James, Isco and Sergio Ramos all chipping in with 10 goals or more throughout the course of the campaign. Cristiano Ronaldo was still great, just a little bit less of a one-man army. His relationship down the left-hand side with Marcelo bore through and Real Madrid were the perfect mix of defensive cover and attacking harmony. In terms of records, Real went 16 games in a row winning, which equaled the La Liga record. They went 49 unbeaten and scored in 73 games in a row, including every single match in this 2016-17 season. But throughout it all, there was the Zinedine Zidane hallmark of consistency in his team selection and turning up in the big matches. Cristiano Ronaldo's double in Bayern's own backyard ended their 16 match home winning streak and on top of this he went and scored a hat-trick in the second leg. There was another hat-trick against Atletico and honestly we talk about Zidane, we talk about teammates but when you're trying to gun for European glory year after year after year it helps when you've got someone like Cristiano Ronaldo in the team, the man who at the time was winning Ballon d'Or after Ballon d'Or. The crowning moment of this all-dominant, all-conquering season, the final in Cardiff. Juventus was swept aside. They could only look on as Real Madrid won 4-1 in the Champions League final. And if there was any doubt as to who the real kings of Europe were, well, there was no question about it afterwards. The final season brought a closing to the legacy, but not without one last hurrah. Throughout the whole campaign, they lost nine matches and it seems that their crash landing showed signs that at the club things weren't quite right behind the scenes. It was a season which saw the side slump to third in La Liga by the end of the campaign and really failed to replace many of the stars that they've sold over the summer. 
Yes, the starting 11 didn't exactly change, but there are a few names who departed the club without adequate replacement. It was a season of inconsistency for the club on the most part. They were first after the first match day in La Liga and never at the top of the table again for the whole of the rest of the campaign. On top of this, they finished second in their Champions League group, having failing to beat Spurs in both games, and that would leave them with a little bit of a difficult draw come the knockout stages. On top of this, around Christmas time, there was a poor run of just two wins in seven La Liga games, and all of the goals that Cristiano Ronaldo was scoring weren't exactly backed up by the rest of the squad. In fact, Gareth Bale was the only one who was chipping in with an acceptable amount of goals for a team that the previous season had just not stopped scoring. After finishing second in the Champions League, like I mentioned, they were dealt a draw with PSG. But despite this, Real Madrid showed yet again that they just knew how to get through in European competition. There was a victory away in the Parc de France and of course at home at the Bernabeu as well. Big away wins followed at Bayern Munich and Juventus in the upcoming rounds. And honestly, they must have known that Lady Luck was shining down upon them despite their poor La Liga form when they got a last minute penalty against Juventus. Now, I couldn't talk about Real Madrid without bringing this up. Yes, it was heartbreak. It was supposed to be Gigi Buffon's year. After a fantastic away win, Juve had gone to Real Madrid, turned it around and were winning 3-0 until a penalty was given in the last minute. And honestly, say what you want, it was a penalty. Sides create their own luck. Real Madrid, although it was very soft, deserved that penalty because it was a penalty. Nothing to do with the rest of the game, nothing to do with the minute, whether it was first minute, last minute, Champions League final, this, that and the other. It was unfortunately a penalty and when you need a big player with a big, big level of confidence to step up at these clutch moments, who better than Cristiano Ronaldo? With that victory in the quarters and getting rid of Bayern in the semis, the final in Ukraine was the final piece of this all-conquering European puzzle, but Unfortunately for them, it'll be remembered for two rather astonishing moments. I say unfortunately, they'll still be remembered very fondly. Gareth Bale's bicycle kick, for me, the greatest goal in the Champions League final, certainly will be remembered, but from a Liverpool point of view, the performance of Loris Karius will always taint this final. It will taint it for Liverpool fans, and for Real Madrid fans, there was a bit of a shyness about winning. A bit of, ah, we kind of feel bad for you as well, because Karius has certainly never recovered from that moment. It wasn't the greatest match for Real Madrid, but certainly it was the cherry on top of the icing on top of this cake for this European dynasty. Unfortunately, this cake went off very, very soon. Zidane left the club. Real Madrid ended up stealing Spain's coach the night before the World Cup started. And a few months later, Cristiano Ronaldo had moved on to Serie A with Juventus. But do not be fooled. This is a legacy that will live on for generations. There's no way you can argue about the success of this team or the fact they deserve to be mentioned within the greatest teams of all time. They were all dominating, all conquering, and so damn consistent with it too. You always knew what you were going to get. Having said that, sadly, everything good must come to an end. It was the culmination of many glorious moments, and who knows, maybe a few more are just around the corner. Zidane is back at the club. They are La Liga reigning champions as we speak, and who knows, maybe some more European glory is awaiting just around the corner. So there you have the latest episode in our GOAT series, but who guys do you want to see next? Let us know in the comment section below and watch out for the next episode. There we go. Round of applause. Ah.